Hello, my friends, and welcome back to The Dean's List. I'm your host, your Dean of Students, and your very best friend, Mr. Walters. May is Asian American and Pacific Islander History Month. This is a time to celebrate the cultures and contributions of people from Asia and the Pacific Islands. Asia is a huge continent with almost 50 countries, including the Philippines, Pakistan, and Thailand. The Pacific Islands are located in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. In these thousands of islands, there are 15 independent Pacific Island nations, a few of which are the Marshall Islands, Fiji, and Tonga. Celebrating Asian American and Pacific Islander History Month is important because it helps us learn about and appreciate the diverse cultures and histories of these groups of people who have made important contributions to our country. It's a time to honor the past and learn about the accomplishments of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders and recognize their roles in shaping the United States. Today, we're going to learn about Gyo Fujikawa, a Japanese American writer and illustrator of over 50 children's books. We're going to be reading from this book, Little Dreamers, Visionary Women Ac Around the World by Vashti Harrison. Let's read. As a child, Gyo could be found sketching flowers in her backyard in Berkeley, California, instead of playing with dolls or toys. Her creativity was evident early on, but her parents worried about their daughter's future if she chose a career in art. For Japanese immigrants in the early 20th century, it was difficult to succeed. But Gyo persevered and earned a scholarship to the Chouinard Institute in Los Angeles. After graduation, Gyo spent a year in Japan studying the traditional art of brush painting. Back in California, she returned to Chouinard as a teacher. She also worked part-time for Walt Disney Productions, designing brochures and posters for its films, an impressive accomplishment in a company with few women or people of color. This job took her to New York City in 1941. That same year, after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, the U.S. entered World War II. Soon, Japanese Americans on the West Coast were forced into relocation camps. Gyo was fortunate to be in New York, so she avoided internment. Her family was not so lucky. Despite the war, Gyo worked diligently. Eventually, she left Disney and began illustrating magazine covers. This got her noticed by a book publisher, and she was hired to illustrate a new edition of Robert Louis Stevenson's A Child's Garden of Verses. In 1963, she published a book called Babies, which she wrote and illustrated herself, and soon followed that with Baby Animals. Both books were wildly successful and are still in print today. She eventually published more than 40 books for children. Although she never had kids of her own, Gyo took special care in her work to consider what a child might enjoy. Her style is vibrant and elegant with sweet, round-cheeked characters. But what made Gyo's work historic was her choice to celebrate diversity and incorporate characters of many ethnicities into children's books. If you'd like to learn more about Gyo Fujikawa, head on down to the Ponderosa Library and check out this book. It began with a page, How Gyo Fujikawa Drew the Way, by Kyo McClear and Julie Morstad. This book celebrates the life and legacy of Gyo Fujikawa, who paved the way for greater inclusivity and representation in children's literature. You're also going to find some spectacular books in the Ponderosa Library celebrating Asian American and Pacific Islander History Month. Make sure to check them out and let me know what you find. It's so great to be learning together. I'm glad to be your host, your Dean of Students, and your very best friend, Mr. Walters. And I'll see you next time on The Dean's List. And welcome back to the Ponderosa Champions League. It has been a fierce back and forth battle all match long between Mr. Walters and your Ponderosa Wildcats. We find ourselves all tied up at three for the final shootout for all the marbles. Let's go down now to the pitch where the young and promising players have been selected for the shootout for the Wildcats. First up, it'll be Cody the Crusher. 
The Crusher hails from the Spokane Valley, a force in the soccer world. Second up, Avery the Brave. The nickname fits as she looks calm, cool, and collected under pressure. And kicking off third will be Maddie the Monster. The three of them are teammates in Mrs. Rogers' room. Facing these players is Mr. Walters. His business casual approach to tending the goal has earned him the nickname of the reader from his teammates. Even under this kind of pressure, the reader has found a way to dig into a great book. And here we go. The first kick of the shootout, the crusher. A strong right foot. And Walters hip checks that away and finishes his paragraph. Next up, Avery the Brave. The ball is set. Hit set. And the kick. No, strong to the left corner, and Walters slaps that away and finishes that chapter. The Wildcats' last hope is Maddie the Monster. The Monster kick, the roll, right between the lines. Goal!